Good morning, readers. And if it's not morning for you right now, then I wish you a good morning to come. Or if you prefer, I hope that the last morning that you had was a good one. Isn't that interesting? I mean, right now I'm in my present, but you, you are in my future and I, I am in your past and yet we are communicating. Technology, light, sound, and coffee enable us to fold the fabric of time and share experience. For example, in my future, I have already been notified that you are watching this video. And further, if you decide to click on any of the tags in this video, I will have known immediately. We are communicating through the great sandwich board of time, talking if you will, and we are talking about a truly mind-bending time-traveling novel by David Mitchell called Cloud Atlas. Now, I went into Cloud Atlas knowing nothing except that a movie bearing the same title came and went without a ripple. So I was surprised to discover that what I had entered was less a linear narrative and more of a plot puzzle, the story equivalent of an M.C. Escher. Five distinct times and places grow out of each other like a topiary maze. Take a turn from 1970s California and you may find yourself in 2005 London or in Bruges at the end of World War I. Remember the epistolary art books by Nick Bantock called Griffin and Sabine, where in a series of letters described a perpetually unveiling mystery. Cloud Atlas has the same intricate and intriguing detail. You are drawn in by the mastery and style of each new location, even while you're further confused by its presence in the story in the first place. The only thing you have to hold on to while the book heedlessly jumps through time and genre is a mole, or a birthmark. Apparently it looks like a comment, and the gene sequence that accompanies it. This barest thread links hundreds of years of history and future events and ultimately ties it all together in the tiniest little bow. Moments like this, I can feel your heart beating as clearly as I feel my own, and I know that separation is an illusion. My life extends far beyond the limitations of me. David Mitchell was born in 1969 and raised in Worcestershire, England. He described his childhood as white, straight and middle class. Authors who influenced him were Asimov, Auster, and Thornton Wilder, whom he says implanted in me a distrust of the distinction between high, middle, and low brow books. As a young man, he fell in love with a Japanese woman and moved with her to Hiroshima, where he lived until 2002. His five novels include Ghostwritten, Number Nine Dream, Cloud Atlas, Black Swan Green, and his most recent, The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoe. Mr. Mitchell has a mild stutter, just like his main character in Black Swan Green. He says, the writer that I am is informed by the stammerer I was. The driver opened the Ford trunk and lifted out an airbox, one suitable for transporting a medium-sized dog. He unlocked its clickers and lifted out a striking, perfectly formed but tiny female form, about 30 centimeters in height. She mewled, terrified, and tried to wriggle free. When she caught sight of us, her miniature wordless scream became imploring. Before we could do or say anything, the man swung her off the bridge by her hair and watched her fall. He made a plopping noise with his tongue when she hit the rocks below and chuckled, Cheap riddance, he grinned at us, to very expensive trash. In terms of sheer ambition, this novel is a skyscraper, an architectural masterpiece that towers floors above what anybody else can do in terms of style and technique. David Eggers is quoted on the cover as saying, how the hell did he do it? But my humble question is, why the hell did he do it? I can name the page, though I won't, where this question first dawned on me. I was reminded of the Empire State Building, which has for the last 10 years been the tallest building in New York City, but it has very few paying tenants. In other words, it's empty. Cloud Atlas has a very thin theme about human rights and selfishness, but it's not enough to support the edifice. I recommend it for narrative architecture students, puzzlers, and sci-fi adventurists, but anybody who's looking for some chicken soup for their soul should probably move down the block. Our lives are not our own. From womb to tomb, we're bound to others past and present. And by each crime and every kindness, we birth our future. 